Welcome back into the Pick and Roll NBA podcast with Jet and Sap, presented by Full Press Coverage. Uh, Sap, this has been a very, very strange NBA year uh, because of the world we live in right now. Uh, COVID is running rampant through not just the NBA, but the entire world, especially with the Omicron variant, very easily transmissible. And that has resulted in the NBA uh, basically allowing cameos from, you know, anybody who's ever suited up or wanted to suit up and uh, fulfill their dream of being an NBA player uh, with 10 day contracts being uh, utilized by virtually every team in the league uh, in order to fill out their roster because guys are in and out with uh, with the health and safety protocols, as they call it. Um, and that's led to some fun appearances uh, probably the most fun, the Joe Johnson appearance for the Celtics, uh, about 7,500 days in between his last appearance with the Celtics. And, uh, he did score a bucket, um, in his first, uh, first game back with Boston. That was one of the few highlights of the Celtics season this year, where the highlights have been few and far between. Uh, but Sap, it got us thinking, are there other players you'd like to see suit up? Uh, uh, who have you enjoyed watching with these 10 day contracts? And what do you think about all this? Well, I mean, it's, it's certainly interesting. And, but at times it, it seems like it's a necessity, right? Because we see teams with eight or nine guys that are out. So you have to go out and find other players. As we saw the other night that Minnesota did that and they were able to beat the Celtics with essentially a G league team. But the Joe Johnson one is interesting. Cause like you said, it was been almost 20 years since he last played with the Celtics, he was drafted by the Celtics, spent, what, a little more than a half a year, and then Rick Pitino right. trade a few years after he did the same thing with Chauncey Billups. Just imagine if Pitino just kept Billups, Joe Johnson, Antoine Walker, and Paul Pierce. Maybe they would have had something there, but Rick Pitino's not the most patient guy. I think he flushes the toilet while he's urinating, uh, which is the ultimate sign of, of being impatient. He just couldn't have a team stick together for a while and see what would happen. So yeah, it just got us to thinking of, of different ones and l- let's just have some fun with this. I'll throw some out there for you. One that came to mind right away is Allen Iverson. He's 46 years old, hasn't been in the league <laughs> for a decade. Why not have him come back to Philadelphia? Iverson and B that would be interesting. And then imagine if Ben Simmons comes back, what would Iverson's reaction be with Ben Simmons? Cause we're, we're talking about two totally different dudes there, right? Like yes. Iverson, loved basketball right he he poured his heart and soul out onto the court i mean a guy who was what 5 10 maybe 5 11 would you know throw his body into the lane if necessary would do anything to win and then he'd be looking at a guy who's a foot taller with all that skill and ben simmons who looks like he doesn't really give a crap so iverson come back to the 76ers uh you and Embiid would be fun to watch and you know if ben simmons ever shows up i'm sure that would be an interesting meeting between ai and big ben simmons yeah, uh, I like that one. Um, I don't know if Allen Iverson has any interest in it, but I, I like it. How about this one, Sep? Uh, Greg Oden. I think there's still time for him to, you know, make that a debate again, whether he should have been the number one, deserved to be the number one pick or Kevin Durant. He's only 33, uh, so he's still got a lot of basketball left there, in him. He, that's amazing. <laughs> I know. <laughs> that, that blows my mind. It was like the other night, Greg Monroe, we found out was 31. I'm like, I thought they were in their 40s. He's... 33. Yeah. Cause he, he I mean, the 2000, that's crazy. I mean, he looked 33 when he was 12. I mean, he looked old when he came into the league, not just physically, but his face and kind of his mannerisms. Yeah. That would be awesome. If those knees are, are good. Yeah, hasn't played he, since 2014 uh, when he was with Miami for uh, 23 games, he played in the Chinese league. Uh, I think, you know what, if I was Greg Oden, I would feel like I still, uh, there's still something to prove, you know, everybody talking about Kevin Durant potentially winning MVP this season, maybe winning a championship, you know, insert your name back into that argument. That'd be interesting. I remember there was a time in the eighties where Will Chamberlain was going to come back and he was about 45, 46, which back in the eighties felt older than now, you know, like 46 was considered old, you know, 35, 40 years ago, Will was going to come back and he was in good enough shape to do it as a backup center. He probably would have given you 12, 14 minutes a night and probably would have given you six or eight rebounds because, you know, Wilt could rebound in any era against any opponent. So that would have been interesting. Um, I'm going to go with a couple of shooters because Steph Curry just set the mark for most three sure, pointers. Yeah. So what about Ray Allen to Milwaukee and Reggie Miller to Indiana? I mean, Ray is 46, still looks to be in great shape. Reggie's 56. That's that's a little bit old to come back to the NBA. 
but he doesn't look like he's put two pounds on since he retired. He seemed to be as, as lean and mean as ever. So what about, you know, Reggie Miller and, and Ray Allen coming back? Maybe they'll start to challenge Steph Curry, whose shooting percentage continues to go down from three. Since he broke the record, actually leading up to the two or three weeks leading up to breaking the record, his shooting percentage went down and it's continued to be that since he broke the record. So maybe Ray Allen and Reggie Miller want to you know come back and challenge Steph. Yeah, no, he stinks now, Steph Curry. He's really just bad. Um, uh, I, I, I honestly, you know, I know we're, we're throwing out some like random names joking. I honestly believe Ray Allen could still probably be effective as an NBA player. I, oh, I mean, I, I don't think he could log big minutes, but I, I, I'm sure he's still in phenomenal shape and I'm sure he still knows how to shoot a basketball. So I, I actually think he could be, would be a decent pickup for a team. Yeah, I mean, why don't the Lakers pick him up, right? He he can't play worse defense than Russell Westbrook, So and he can certainly shoot a lot better. I guarantee you the first time on the court, he would not hit the top of the backboard the way Russell Westbrook did the other night from 18 feet. 18-foot jump shot with slightly contested from the wing, and Russell Westbrook managed to end up shooting it off the top of the backboard, you know, uh, change of possession from 18 feet. Yeah, Ray Allen, I'm, I'm with you. I think he certainly could come back. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I, I mean, again, I, I don't think he could play big minutes, but I, I mean, I gotta believe he could still shoot threes. Um, and that seems to be, you know, all that matters in the NBA these days is, you know, can you shoot a, a three pointer? So, uh, how about, uh, how about some more guys from uh, LeBron's draft class sap that, uh, you know, he's reunited with Carmelo Anthony from his draft class. Uh, he's already played with Chris Bosch and, and Dwayne Wade. So why not, uh, why not Darko Milicic, who was the second pick in that draft class? Maybe Darko wants to, you know, to say, Hey, I should be in this conversation with Carmelo and Chris Bosch and LeBron James and, and Dwayne Wade. What a weird draft class that's, that was, right? <laughs> Four of the five guys are, you know, hall of famers. I think the number one pick in that draft is the greatest player ever. Dwayne Wade's a top 25 player. Uh, Carmelo's probably a top 50 player and Bosch top hundred player. I mean, that was a really good draft and Darko still went second to Detroit. Imagine if Detroit had taken anybody, but Darko, one of those other three guys, how much that would have made that team that much better. And they probably would have contended for many years adding a piece like that. But yeah, that would be interesting. The only thing is I think the last time I saw Darko, he was probably three and a quarter. It looked like he kept in the best shape. He was on the Celtics uh, for one game. That's right. Exactly. The Celtics <laughs> have pretty much had everybody. They had Greg Monroe, yeah. right? Yeah, they did have Greg Monroe. So, yep. Why not? Dark Shaq. Back. They had Shaq, who <laughs> looked ridiculous playing in that Celtic uniform, especially when he was in the white uniform with the white sneakers. It just didn't Shaq. Um, yeah, let's bring Darko back. I'm up for that. Yeah, I think that, uh, like I said, LeBron should try to make an effort now to play with everybody who was in his draft class. I think, was David West in that draft class too? Yes, he was. Oh, bring him back. Bring him back and, to help LeBron. He won a couple titles with Golden State. Uh, another guy he played with Sasha Pavlovich was in that draft class. Mm-hmm. Yep. He played with him. Uh, I believe he played with Dante Jones too. He played with a lot of guys in this draft class. Yeah. Maybe Tom Brady can bring back guys from the 2000 draft class to, you know, go down to Tampa and try to help him win an eighth Super Bowl. Yeah, a lot of those guys are dead. <laughs> they are dead. <laughs> it's been so Actually, long. <laughs> there's, been, there's been many players drafted after Brady, like as far along as eight years after Brady, who are already in the Hall of Fame. Calvin yes. Johnson drafted in 2008 had a great career and is in the hall of fame. I mean, I like that's a total Testament to Tom Brady's greatness and longevity. How's this one? Scotty Pippen and Michael Jordan. Yeah. Oh, no. At this point, right. <laughs> Scotty Pippen wrote the tell all book about Michael Jordan, his, his reaction to the last dance and Jordan and Pippen, um, you know, who won six titles together. Maybe they come back to Chicago. Who's been one of the surprise teams this year. Pippen's 56 Jordan's 58. Let's get them back together again. I don't know how that would work out. Uh, but it would certainly be interesting. How many points per game could Michael Jordan average if he played uh, on, let's say, the worst team in the league? If he got in shape, I'd say 15. And I'm not trying to be funny here. First of all, I think he would intimidate the hell out of half the league. It, it's like, you know, Jesus Christ showing up, right? I mean, <laughs> half the, the entire league would be like, that's Michael Jordan. Like, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to guard him. He's Michael Jordan. And, you know, he's just such a competitive lunatic yeah why not i mean he'd have to get in shape he'd have to give up the cigars the scotch whatever else that he uh puts in his body at this point and get in shape a little bit i mean because i know i know he's you know a freak but you still have to be in some shape to play in the nba right um 
So, yeah, I think he could go out and get 12 or 15 points a night. Sure. Why not? He's, he's got that. He'd take a lot of shots to get there, but he's so competitive and, and I'm sure he can still score a basketball. I, I don't question that at all. This is the one I'm the last one I'm going to throw out, Sap, because I think it's really interesting. And it's a it has for a lot of reasons. Uh, it's a budding rivalry uh, between him and LeBron James, actually. Uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, 74 Ooh. years old. Uh, still, I'm assuming over seven feet tall. I don't think he's shrunk that much. Seven, uh, he was playing, but let's say he's even seven one. Might want to be pat his all time scoring number, so you know makes it a little harder for LeBron to get there because clearly he doesn't like LeBron very much. He's been you know calling him out in the media about his uh, his lack of um, his lack of I guess a campaign to help people get vaccinated. Uh, LeBron's that is, and uh, Kareem's upset about that. So no, I don't think he wants I, him to break his scoring title because he doesn't like him. No, I, I think he's disappointed in LeBron, right? Because LeBron liked or retweeted some cartoon that, you know, had cold flu, COVID, you know, yeah, that was with, dumb. Right? and all kind of pointing at each other. And yeah, I, I've been disappointed in LeBron with this as well, because I, I said back at the beginning when the vaccine was becoming available almost a year ago, earlier this year, that Jordan and, and LeBron could have been the two guys that really helped. Uh, the two most popular black athletes in the country by far um, could have, you know, kind of pushed the black community to getting the vaccine because the, the black and brown community is getting the vaccine at about one third the rate of the white community. That's not a good thing, right? Because there's hesitancy there among blacks and Latinos because of prior misdeeds right. by our government. But I think LeBron and Michael Jordan could have worked together on that. And I, I think LeBron is disappointed me in that. And I, I know he's disappointed Kareem, who was always very socially active and, and really, really into it. You know, it wasn't like he was, you know, just had a few of the facts or details down. He, he would get into it. I mean, the man would write op-eds for the New York Times, right? He's got his own Substack account. Uh, he's a true intellectual. So, yeah, that would that'd be interesting. Have him come back. Would he come back with the Lakers, though? Or would no. he come back with because yeah, that that could be. I, mean, I, I think he'd like to come back with the Bucks. I think he likes Giannis. Uh, yep. You know, he, he he's uh, he he could um, you know compete for a championship there. Uh, I yeah, I like, think Sap. Like I said, it, if you're it, in it, California, puts a little you're... more distance between him and LeBron. I'm sure being seven feet tall, he could get maybe you know like Taco Fall gets in there, gets you know two or you know three baskets when he comes in. Just throw it up to him. Right, the hook shot. That, that thing is going to be with him forever. I mean, that, that's such a skilled shot, and he probably could still go out there and hit it. And it's not a physical league anymore. So you get Kareem coming back to Milwaukee. Although I don't think Kareem is going to move to Milwaukee. He moved out of Milwaukee to move to Southern California. That would be a rivalry, though, because as LeBron's closing in on the scoring record, you know, Kareem's going to try to pad his numbers, kind of like Ray Allen and Reggie Miller getting in competition with Steph Curry as the all-time three points leaders. Let me give you a couple other ones out there. Go for we it. We met in an earlier podcast. Uh, Jason Kidd. Jim Jackson, Jamal Mash Mashburn, yeah. they were together 27 years ago in Dallas, and it looked like it was going to be a great big three, and they were going to win a lot, and it just didn't work, and they had to break them up. Well, now they're older guys. They're in their late 40s or 50 or whatever their ages are. Maybe put them together again and see if it would work. So Jason Kidd, Jim Jackson, and Jamal Mashburn, the three Js. Do you have Luca could... a little bit more uh, shooting around him in Dallas? Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, well, Kidd and – Kids coaching Luke in Dallas. So, he is, you know, yeah. It, That's why I assume they would all go back yeah. there. Kids are already there. It could be the player coach, you know, Luca, who has to lose a few pounds because um, he's starting to look like a Macy's Day float. Um, a Macy, a Thanksgiving Day Macy's float. Right. I mean, he's on a lot of weight in the offseason. Not quite as much as Zion, but Luke is about 265. No, that's what's making it nice and easy for every other NBA player who gains weight is there. You just compare him to Zion and say, oh, it's not that bad. Right. Yeah. I mean, Zion 330. It's just amazing, isn't it? Um, yeah. So maybe we get those three guys back in Dallas. I'm sure, you know, Mark Cuban, who's always ahead of the curve and, and ahead of everyone when it comes to marketing, that would be pretty good. Maybe Steve Nash could come back with Brooklyn. He looks to be in good shape. I know he was really getting into tennis when Brooklyn reached out and offered him the head coaching job. He could be a player coach. And this is one other thing, Jet, before we move on. I want to break up the Lakers at this point, right? Because it's just been a frustrating year. So, I want to see Carmelo back to Denver. 
You know, they can yeah. use a spot up shooter. They're they're middle of the pack in the Western Conference. Definitely got to get rid of Westbrook, send him back to OKC, a team that's not contending. He can go get his triple doubles. And LeBron to Cleveland. I think LeBron looks at that Cleveland roster and goes, hmm. Yeah, our friend Kendrick Perkins said that, right? Yeah, very interesting. What, wouldn't that be perfect? You start in Cleveland, go to Miami, go back to Cleveland, go to L.A., end in Cleveland. I think that the Cavaliers need to have some sort of backbone and say, we're, you know what, stop. We're not going to just keep doing this with you <laughs> when we have a yeah, good it, roster. It hasn't, it hasn't worked out well for them. I mean, the only. No, it has, but they have no pride, was, no pride, no backbone, Sap. You know, I mean, they did win their only title with him leading the way. And uh, his first go around, they went from being the most irrelevant franchise, maybe in American team sports and became very relevant because of LeBron. So, yeah, do that. And maybe. But if the Lakers stay together, and Carmelo and Westbrook and LeBron stick in L.A., why don't the Lakers go out and get metal world peace? Yeah. You know, because he's I think crazy. He's crazy. <laughs> would be interesting. And, you know, could you just picture a team with Russell Westbrook and metal world peace on it together? Um, no, <laughs> that would be, that would be interesting. I saw a team with, uh, Lamar Odom and metal world peace on that together. Those were two crazy that, guys. It's crazy too. Yeah. But Westbrook's hyper aggressive, crazy, right? Like, he's, he's very aggressive. Yeah, I don't picture like Westbrook's the guy you don't want to cut cut him off in traffic. Like he'll come after you, you know, like right. Jack Nichols, <laughs> like two decades ago, the golf club up and st- out and started smashing the hood of the car of some other, you know, uh, driver. So that's right. what you get careful about with Westbrook. There's definitely road rage with Westbrook. There's like court rage with Westbrook when he's on the court. So yeah, it'd be fun to see. And look, I, I don't think, I mean, some of these obviously are ludicrous. I don't think Jordan and, Pippen are coming back together for the Bulls, although I'd never put it past Jordan. I mean, he's, you know, uh, I think he's enjoying his life playing a lot of golf. But, yeah, be, you know, it wouldn't be shocking if, like, a week or two from now when another team gets hit with COVID and eight guys are out that, that we hear some guy that's been out of the league. I mean, could Dirk come back for Dallas? I don't know. I mean, he's only been retired, what, three years? So, uh, yeah. Three or four that's years. Right. So. Who the hell knows? It depends, too, how good a shape these guys are in. Like, Kevin Garnett looks like he's still in really good shape. Ray Allen looks like he's still in really good shape. Now they're in their forties. That's asking a lot, but you know, it's not like, like Shaq couldn't come back. That just, no. not, well, I mean, he wouldn't make it down the court once and you'd need a stretcher. I saw him try to shoot threes the other night in the studio at TNT. Uh, he bet um, Candace Parker, they could make them. He airballed the, basically all of them. <laughs> yeah. And then Barkley's not coming back. Those guys, you know, they would blow Achilles knees and all sorts of things. If they came back, Kenny Smith looks like he could still play. And he, he's, you know, he's in his early fifties, but he's, he just seems always young, but yeah, we'll see what happens if the NBA pulls this off. Maybe we'll, if we were doing another sport, we'd have quarterbacks coming back out of retirement, like John Elway or Dan Marino. Yeah. Um, I think the Colts have called all those guys, actually. They may be, yeah, I think Burt Jones, who played in the 70s, is like 65. Maybe they'll bring him back. Yeah, no Carson Wentz this week because he's a dummy who didn't get vaccinated. Right. So uh, all quarterbacks in the NFL unvaccinated. We'll yeah. Stay away from that. My, my, my. <laughs> he's inoculated. Yeah, he's but he's not vaccinated. He's, he's playing he's, well. He's immunized. Sorry, immunized. He's my, playing, my fault. He's playing well. No, yeah, he's playing well. I, if it, my nightmare scenario, Sap, is he wins the Super Bowl and the Nets and Kyrie Irving win the NBA championship. And then you know what? I'll take that because I'm I mean, obviously I will see the come on. Oh, God, of course, I'll take that. Are you kidding me? I go through every day of my life arguing with people about Aaron Rodgers. I, I've, I've given up saying that he's the greatest quarterback ever. I think he's the most talented quarterback ever. There's a difference. Brady's the greatest quarterback ever. But I, I'm pretty adamant that he's one of the five greatest quarterbacks of the Super Bowl era. And I, I think I'm accurate with that. If he gets a second Super Bowl, he's right there with Manning and Elway behind yeah. only Brady and Montana. So I, I need that second Super Bowl. But I'm too far in now. I mean, I've got a Green Bay mask. Uh, not like a Spider-Man mask, you know, the mask you wear because of COVID. Right, yeah, yeah. Of those, I get, you know, I, I wear the same green shirt and everything else. Uh, not a Packer shirt, just a green T-shirt while I'm watching the game. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm too far in, Jed. I, I need that championship. If it means Durant and Kyrie uh, winning a championship, um, then so be it. And Durant, no. I always, I'm always pushing back against like Durant and Steph because I don't want to have them challenge LeBron in terms of titles. LeBron has four, Steph has three, Durant has two. We'll see what happens the rest of their careers. But I will give Kevin Durant a lot of credit. He played, what, eight years with Russell Westbrook? He did. God bless him. 
Seriously, how did he put up with that for eight years? Uh, I mean, and, and again, Westbrook played hard. Well, he did. He won an MVP there, so you know he got his touches. Oh, man, but yeah, but the thing is, I think a couple of the final years, Westbrook actually took more shots per game than uh, Kevin Durant. That should tracks. Never be the case. <laughs> that should never be the case. But that's Russell Westbrook. Anyway, uh, yeah, we'll see who who comes out of retirement to make things happen. Yeah, we'll have to see. Um, I, you know, I'm hopeful that, uh, that, you know, the Celtics can bring in, uh, some, some more ex Celtics, uh, because that's the only way the season will be fun going, you know, the, 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 the honestly sap that's been of the Celtic season so far, Joe Johnson playing two minutes of a game has been one of the top 10 highlights of the season. That's how bad it's been. It was the most talked about, right? So yeah, bring in, you know, Pierce, Allen Garnett, maybe you put them together again. No, not Allen. No, sorry, oh, he Allen. can't. He can't play here anymore. Allen sorry, seems like repaired his relationship with Pierce. I don't know if he's repaired it with Garnett. Um, yeah, when Garnett when Garnett uh, thaws on him, then I'll, I'll change my mind. But I'm holding out for that. Garnett's tough. He could be Sicilian for all we know. Garnett. Yeah, I respect that. He, I like that. Uh, uh, yeah, he doesn't. He seems to hold grudges. Like good, my, good man. Uh, my my friends and not family because I'm Roman, but my friends from Sicily. They can hold uh they can hold a grudge. But uh yeah, maybe maybe uh Dave Cowens comes back or you know, someone like that. Most of the other Anybody. guys gone. Antoine. I'd like to see Antoine, Antoine Walker. He's four hundred pounds. He's he's Perk. filling the screen on you know, four. Oh, I'd love to see Perk come back. I would love to see Perk back as an assistant coach, you know, and to just have him like, you know, take Jalen. He's a great job right now. I don't think he wants oh, he's to coach. Time of his life. He's he's yeah. having a great time. Yeah, but I mean just picture him in the corner of a locker room with his hands around the neck of Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. Like uh, this I team would drive so, any, know, anybody, it, the most would, patient person, it would drive them no, crazy. It, it kind of drove Brad Stevens crazy. I mean, talk about a patient guy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Kendrick would not have patience for that. And he probably like, you know, punched them at some point, which would be interesting. And, you know, but we don't want to get to that. Yeah. Um, all right. Sap. next time we talk, we're going to talk a little bit about some uh, rumors that the NBA, uh, mm-hmm mid-season tournament is getting some traction we'll talk about what that means and what we think about it um but that's gonna do it for us here so uh i hope you have a very happy new year sap hope everybody is happy new year um thank you and uh you know i think that the celtics should make some big new year's resolutions to uh start start over and my new year's resolution is to not let it affect me as much when they are so disappointing (laughs) good that's a good resolution there you go. Um, all right, Sap. So uh, we will talk to everybody next week. Uh, make sure you check out the uh, Pick and Roll NBA podcast with Jet and Sap wherever podcasts are found. Check out our social medias at John Sap 25, J O H N S A P 25, at Jet Stryer, the YouTube version if you're not already watching, youtube.com slash Jet Stryer. And we are presented by Full Press Coverage. And a happy new year to everybody there at Full Press Coverage. Talk to you next week, everybody. See ya.